Let's talk about how you can sell your house by yourself without an agent. Now, of course, I am an agent, and of course, I think you should use an agent. Let me rephrase, an experienced agent. But today, I'm going to go through the process and tell you how you can sell your house by yourself and point out all of the pitfalls that you need to be aware of. And we'll also talk about the non-negotiables that an owner must do when selling their house. Plus, stay tuned because towards the end, I'm going to talk about a scam that homeowners who are looking to sell their house by owner need to be on the lookout for. Maybe scam is a little harsh of a word. Okay, let's call it misleading by unethical real estate agents. Oh, real quick. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. All right, so first, why do people generally decide to sell their house by owner? Probably one of the easier questions that I will ever be asked. It's to save money, of course. I hear people talk all the time about how they have done it before, but the industry has changed a lot in the last five years. Great, you did it 20 years ago. It's a completely different world. I know because I was around and selling real estate 20 years ago. People go to for sale by owner because it costs a lot of money to hire an agent and then on top of it, pay a buyer broker as well. Which by the way, quick side note here, you don't need to offer buyer agency compensation when selling your house. Another thing is that as an industry, an agent's compensation is generally the same, no matter their experience and knowledge. This has never made sense to me and is why in my opinion, there are people that don't see a value in real estate agents. It's because a lot of lazy and competent agents are overpaid. But then again, those are the people that you would ensure that would never be your agent, right? Know that going the for sale by owner fruit is more than just saving a couple bucks. Make sure that you are factoring in the additional stress that it's going to cause. Selling a house is already right. It's the third most stressful process a person is gonna go through. After death and divorce, of course, so adding in the stress of being responsible for all the decisions without any guidance while competing against industry leaders, it could be overwhelming. Also, be sure that you factor in all the additional time that you're going to have to put in and towards the process of selling your house. Now, I can assure you that it isn't just a couple hours. And also, make sure that you account for the increased possibilities that an agreed upon transaction will fall through. It's just always important to know what you're getting into. Taking you on the process of selling your house by yourself, it's going to lead to more stress. People can be idiots, people are rude, and you will be dealing with a lot of people. I personally have been involved in more than a thousand transactions, can say that with each transaction, I learned something new. Heck, right now, I'm dealing with a situation where an agent in my market can't even read an offer and present it to their sellers properly, and are now bringing it up, this issue, two weeks before closing. Being another agent and knowing the ins and outs of the law, my buyers aren't going to get steamrolled. That I can assure you, and that's the value of an experienced, knowledgeable agent. But the experience matters because there are constant new objections and or new issues. The experience of having been around the block a time or two allows me to see red flags and helps me identify issues before they become deal-killing issues. It's important that when selling a house by owner that you need to be aware that you don't know what you're doing. You won't know as much as the agent that the buyer hires who has sold hundreds or maybe thousands of homes to represent them. As a for sale by owner, you need to be aware of your weaknesses. You need to have already strategized what you would do in certain situations so you can do the research ahead of time and be ready to figure it out any solutions or resolutions to problems that pop up because I can assure you they're going to. There's no question in my mind, you can do it. It's just that you need to be aware of your limitations so that you can properly navigate the deal. Now, I equate it to me running. I can run relatively fast. I'd knock out a 5K, no problem. I could get through a 10K, but a half marathon or let alone a full marathon, forget about it. I know my limitations, I'd need to prepare. I'd have a lot to learn before taking on that type of challenge. That's talking about running a stupid marathon, let alone talking about selling what is most likely your biggest asset. Here are the things that are non-negotiable when selling your house for for sale by owner. The first non-negotiable is that you need to get professional pictures taken. Hard stop. This is a bust. The reason why is that your house, when online, has an open house 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Bad pictures are the first thing that a buyer looks at while research shows that you have about eight seconds or about two pictures in order to capture a potential buyer's attention. And by professional pictures, 
you want to find a local company who specializes in real estate photography. They know what they are doing. They will be able to better capture the space and make it feel larger and more inviting. They're worth their weight in gold. The second non-negotiable is that you need to market the property at a correct price. If you don't put the right price on the house, then you won't get anyone looking. Buyers today are more aware than ever before of overpriced houses. It used to be that overpriced houses would at least get some showings, but today I have noticed that an overpriced house gets close to nothing. Nailing price is more important than ever before. In order to figure out what the right price is, you need to do the research. Now, one thing I have seen, which is quite frankly complete BS, is that a seller will bring an agent out to have them go over the market to talk about pricing with no intention of listing the house with them. Wasting a professional's time and money, that's not cool. And frankly, doing this is really blurring ethical lines. Agents are not paid a salary. They don't get paid unless a property is sold. So sitting down with a seller that has no intention of using their services means that they could miss another opportunity where they could actually procure business to support them and their family. Now, the third non-negotiable is that you need to stage your house. Now, staging your house does not necessarily mean that you are taking out your furniture and bringing in new furniture. Although, if you have a vacant house, then it's important to note that it's been a proven that staged houses sell faster and for more money. In most cases, staging involves doing things that make the property feel brighter, cleaner, and more spacious. It's removing clutter. It's adding additional light. It's removing big furniture or unneeded furniture in the room. Staging will be the highest return on investment out of the other activities that you do. Now, the fourth non-negotiable is that you need to write hick bot ad copy. A description of three bedrooms, two baths is in a great neighborhood is not going to cut it. You need to step into a pair of marker shoes and elaborate on those special features of the house. You need to talk them up. You need to make them seem better than they are ultimately. You need to help build an image in the potential buyer's head of how great the house is and how amazing the value that it is that they're gonna get. Spend a lot of time on this. It makes a huge difference. Now the fifth non-negotiable is that you need to check your tax record. You need to verify that the way that you are marketing a house matches with what is being listed it as. You need to ensure that the amount that you are advertising for the cost of taxes is correct is a great example. You need to make sure that the beds and bathrooms all match up. You need to be fully aware of the background of your house. This is important because misrepresenting something can open you up to litigation. Now, a real estate agent has errors and emissions insurance. If they make a mistake, your homeowner's policy will not cover you here. The saying measure twice and cut once, it really rings true when selling your house by yourself. Now that the non-negotiables are out of the way, it's time to talk about how you will promote your house. In other words, how do you get people to your house? It's important because misstepping or understepping here can cost you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. And the entire point of selling your house by owner is to get more money, right? So let's make sure that you do all of these steps and do them correctly to ensure that you achieve that goal. If you're trying to net the most for your house by not paying a real estate agent fee, then the best method is to put a sign in the yard and do some guerrilla marketing. By doing it this way and being a little more quiet about your house for sale, then it drastically decreases the likelihood of paying a buyer agency fee. Tell all your friends, your family members, and neighbors, be sure to post it on Facebook so you can let your social sphere know and maybe ask them to share the post as well. You will want to host an open house. A quick pro tip, buy a bunch of the directional for sale signs. They will actually help exposure when you list the house, but also help direct more people during the open houses. Now, people believe that open houses are the end all be all when it comes to selling a house. They're not. A while back, the National Association of Realtors found that less than 1% of home sales are actually traced back to open houses. They are, however, great to get the tire kickers through though, but the best opportunities will come with private showings. Going into this, it's important to know that it's typical that most people who list their house by owner still end up paying a buyer broker fee. And this possibly drastically increases when you put it on sites like Zillow or the MLS. But we will talk about that in just a couple moments. Now, I know a lot of sellers look down on this because the reason they went through this endeavor in the first place is because they wanted to make more money and retain the 5 or 6%. I mean, again, that's the point of all this, right? To make more money. But I personally feel that it's a good thing. Yes, it's important to save money, but aren't the true intentions to sell the house? But keep in mind that when this happens, it means that you are negotiating and competing against an agent that does this full time. 
they will most likely have a leg up through the negotiation as well as through the transaction. Something that I'm just going to say here is that if you're already willing to pay a buyer agency fee, someone that is actually working against your best interest, then I ask, how much money are you really saving? Is this savings really worth it considering how much additional work that you're going to have to end up doing as well as that legal liability that you're going to assume? To me, it makes more sense to pay an agent to actually represent you and your best interest while not offering or being willing to pay a buyer broker agent. This just makes a lot more sense to me. Now, I can assure you that you will start getting garaged with phone calls from real estate agents once you start letting people know about the house and that it's for sale. They will be like flies to a pile of, you know, well, yeah, that. They will ask if you're willing to pay a buyer broker fee. They will also get buyers that will ask you if you recognize their buyer agent broker as well. Now, the reason for this is because most active buyers are in exclusive buyer agency agreements. These agreements protect an agent in doing work up front with a promise of being compensated, provided the buyer purchases a home within an agreed upon amount of time in that contract. Again, this all matters because it puts you at a disadvantage as the buyer is going to be represented and you're not going to be. And if you are willing to pay a fee, then it will drastically reduce your buyer pool. It's kind of a lose-lose. Now, once you're on the market, then you will have to be on the lookout for the signs of not having a pre-qualified buyer. You would be amazed at how many people waste other people's time just because they want to look at some pretty houses. They will look at houses that are way beyond their price range. I've seen some crazy things in this regard over my career. Other areas that you're going to want to be on the lookout for are buyers that are not pre-approved or even pre-approved by an awful bank. I would love to publicly give you a list of some of the worst banks with the worst reputations out there, but while well, doing that publicly would get me sued. So yeah, not going to give you that one. You will also need to be on the lookout for the tire kickers who will tell you that they are just ready to go, but spend an hour in the house for the showing, but are really just HGTV hobbyists. These looky loos are the worst as they have little to no respect for other people's time and their considerations. Oh, and also be able to look out for people that need to sell in order to buy. Don't get me wrong, that's not the end of the world, but it really could screw over a for sale by owner if they haven't even started the process of selling. One of the benefits of having an agent that is working for a buyer is that you can find comfort in the agent having already scrubbed that buyer. An agent's time is valuable. I mean, it's not only theirs, it's all of ours most valuable commodity. But if an agent is with an unrealistic buyer or some tire kicker, then the opportunity cost is that they are missing out working with someone who's serious. This is why agents will kick these time wasters to the curb. This is why tire kickers absolutely love for sale by owners. Most buyers don't recognize how hard it is to buy a house without an agent. Issues start with not knowing the process, and then it expands to not knowing the process to not knowing reputable professionals like a good mortgage broker home inspector, or even a real estate attorney. Many times, buyers don't understand their finances, and this is actually going to hold up you as well as your transaction. It could cost you a bunch of time as well as other buyer opportunities. You may decide that the lemon is worth the squeeze and put your house on a site like Zillow. You will drastically increase your buyer pool, but at the same time will drastically increase the chances that you end up paying a buyer broker fee. You need to ensure that you have good pictures and amazing ad copy again but you need to also be able to look out for that scam that I spoke about before, because this is when agents will get aggressive. So what's this unethical thing that a lot of agents will do? You're gonna get a thousand calls from real estate agents. Okay, maybe not a thousand, but it's gonna be an ungodly amount of calls. It will be like some form of cruel, unusual punishment. They're going to say that they have a potential buyer and they need to come look at the house to see if it matches what they're looking for. Now, once they're in the house, they're gonna to try to build some rapport with you. And we'll have come armed with some stats to try to convince you to list that property with them. It's a scam because most likely they don't have a buyer. They are lying to you in order to get their foot in the door. So if an agent calls and says that they have a buyer, then you need to be on the lookout for this scam and you need to vet that agent as well as the buyer. Otherwise, you will be wasting a lot of time, just like you did with all those looky-loo tire kicker buyers that we spoke about before. But these are looky-loo tire kicker agents. They suck. Another option that you may want to consider is utilizing a flat fee brokerage and put your house on the MLS. 
There is enormous negative, which I'm going to talk about shortly, but there are companies that exist where you can spend something like 500 bucks for them to input it, your house on the MLS, whatever local MLS that you use. They will then have all the people reach out to you directly and will not offer any advice or additional services in the process of the sale. Now, I don't necessarily recommend doing this, and it's because it can ultimately cost you tens of thousands of dollars. If it doesn't sell, then it can create a problem later on down the road. It's because your house listing will lose all the new listing excitement, which is when you are most likely going to be able to get top dollar. This is when one or if not numerous variables like bad or wrong pictures, bad copy and the wrong price or even done at the wrong time could cost you a small fortune. So please proceed with caution on this one. Also know that agents see this and will do everything they can to not show for sale by owners. The reason is that an agent knows they will end up doing double the amount of work if their buyer ends up buying that property. And I see it all the time. The seller will lean on the buyer agent to handle and manage the entire transaction. They just think now that an agent is involved, they can just show up at closing and collect their money. It doesn't quite work like that. To stave off headaches, an agent will actively do what they can to keep themselves out of these type of situations. I've also seen time and time again where a seller will start to try to utilize the buyer agent, discuss things with the agent as they begin to get comfortable with them. The issue is that the buyer agent has a fiduciary responsibility to take anything and everything back to the buyer. This is essentially when the wrong words can kill. Kill a transaction, that is. Now, here's an idea, in my opinion, if you opt to put it on the MLS. Then, the best way to do it is to put it on the MLS at a significantly lower price point than what you perceive as the market value. This is going to push a lot of interest and activity to your house. The market will ultimately push up your pricing. But pro tip here, make sure that you put an offer deadline date on that listing. You will want to be prepared for showing requests. Generally, the most showings happen during the evenings and on the weekends, so be prepared to block these times off. You will also find, however, that showing requests will be all over the place. You also need to ensure that you are there to accompany all the showings. The reason for this is that you as a seller don't have the liability insurance protections that an agent does. If there are issues that revolve around the sale, then their liability insurance would cover it. An agent has the luxury of being able to do seller unaccompanied showings, and it's these unaccompanied showings that are the highly preferred ones by buyers. Home buyers prefer viewing a house in private with their representation because they feel more comfortable to talk about a house. They feel more comfortable to talk about the positives as well as the negatives. Because by talking through the negatives, that a lot of times are actually able to overcome those objections. They also don't want someone hovering over them and listening to every word, not to mention say anything negative about the house in fear that they're going to insult the seller. Unfortunately, needing to be there for every showing will limit the access to the property. Limiting the access will then hamper buyer demand, which will very likely lower the overall pricing that you could ultimately get for your property. And I get it. Selling your house will feel like a second job because that's kind of what it is. But you have a life. You've got work. You have a conference car. Maybe you're out of town for work. But all that doesn't matter to a home buyer. They feel that the process isn't about the seller. It's about them. The more roadblocks that are put up to see a house, then the less likely they're going to want to see it especially if they're planning on seeing multiple houses that day. So all that being said, if you can sell your house by putting up a sign in the yard and without going through all these hassles and you don't have to pay a buyer or broker on top of it, then it could all be worth it. Now you need to plan for the possibility of multiple offers, especially in a hot market and if you've decided to take the MLS route and underprice your house. Navigating a multiple offer situation can be difficult, even for professional agents. It's experience that helps us agents be able to help sellers weed out the weaker offers from the stronger offers. It's important to know that the highest price isn't necessarily the best. Other terms and conditions like deposits, down payments, and contingencies can be tough to weigh in figuring out what the most favorable offer is. Let's say you have two offers. One offer is cap, and the other offer is from a buyer that's putting 3.5% down, but the 3.5% down offer is willing to pay an additional $15,000 for the house. What offers the best? A quality of the agent on the other side is also an important factor. A quality bank and a quality pre-approval, or better yet, pre-commitment is extremely important. You will want to do some research as to what acceptable contingencies are in your market and at the current state of the market, as well as what are some realistic dates you should be built into the contract. This can all be very stressful, which is why it's so important to do all of this research and work out all of these scenarios far in advance. Okay, so you have an offer. That's phenomenal. 
But getting an offer is generally not the hard part. It's actually getting to closing. Now, I've found that buyers today are more difficult than buyers that I worked with 10 years ago. And I think it kind of makes sense. Buyers today, they feel like they're getting hosed on price, on interest rate. Okay, maybe difficult's the wrong word. They know what they want. And they will walk away quicker than in the past because they feel like they're getting the short end of the stick. Even knowing cultural differences in how buyers negotiate can be extremely valuable. Pushing too far can be the kiss of death in a deal with no ability to come back in some cultures. When you accept an offer, your escrow agent, oh, that, that's actually a great point. You need to prearrange your escrow agent up front so that you can be ready once you go under agreement. But your escrow agent will hold the buyer's deposit. And in lieu of this, you will then take your house off the market. If you make it past the cold feet stage, then the next step of, is the home inspection and the negotiation of any of these home inspection issues. Now, I've found that this is where a buyer will really try to set the screws to a for sale by owner. They will ask for more, and a lot of times, they will get it. It's this stage that the highest likelihood that the deal is also going to fall through. Once we get past the home inspection, though, then this is when it's all about the contract to close. Now, there are still some hurdles that you need to be aware of, like the mortgage contingency and, and both parties abiding by all the dates in the contract. But be sure to remember to deal with all the utilities and should your property be a condo, then you will also need to have some additional documentation provided to the buyer from the condo association. Also, check beforehand to see if you're in an attorney state like we are here in Massachusetts or if you'd be working with a title company. One is more expensive than the other, but the other may offer you more support through the process. Now, I have said it before, but it's just so important that I feel like I need to say it again. If you are going ahead without an agent, then you really need to figure out what you don't know and really take the time to educate yourself on the process and learn it. This is most likely your most expensive asset, your biggest asset, and there's a very good chance that you may be going up against an experienced agent, so you need to be prepared. Know that it's okay if it doesn't work out. Research shows that 90% of all for sale by owners end up listing with a real estate agent in the end. And that on average for sale by owner homes sell for 5.5% less than a home sold with assistance of an agent. The reason for that? Well, most people won't take the time to learn everything that we just went through. But let's say that you go through the process. You try to sell it for sale by owner and it doesn't work out. You have now decided to enlist the help of an agent. That's great. But please make sure it's an experienced agent. The agents that are wasting your time and saying that they have a buyer are most likely not the right agent to help you. I mean, after all, they started the relationship out with a lie, right? But there is a good chance that you may have some people that are saying that they are interested in your house. If this is the case, then you need to talk about exceptions. And real estate agents hate talking about exceptions. So let's talk about what an exception is, what I personally think is fair, and what you should do in this type of situation. Now, exception or named exclusion is someone that you've identified at the time of signing a listing agreement. You are saying that if the person or persons that you have identified end up buying the house, that you will not owe a real estate commission on that sale. Now, an agent is going to want no exception. While a seller, they're gonna want an exception for the entirety of the contract. I really don't think that's fair, and here's my reason why. An agent will invest in you and your house in order to sell it, from staging to photos to regular marketing channels. And a lot of time, the staging and new strategy that an agent puts in place will actually be what lures the potential buyer to the negotiation table. There should be a max amount of time, call it two weeks on that exception. And out of fairness, if the party that is listed in the exception actually ends up buying the house, then the seller should reimburse the listing agent for the expenses that they laid out. But rather than an exception, what really should be done is that the seller should go to all parties before they put the house on the market and say, hey, we're getting ready to list the house and notify them and say that if you're interested, then you need to let us know by this certain date. Let's just call it a week. This strategy will hopefully force them off the fence. Most buyers that are real buyers will end up pulling the trigger. But one thing that I have become very aware of over the years is that potential buyers will string for sale by owners along as long as possible. Now, one last thing that I think you should be aware of is a buyer will see a property that is being sold for sale by owner will write a lower priced offer. The commission always becomes the issue. The seller wants the commission savings, which is why they're going through this process in the first place. But so does the buyer. 
Just because there's no agent then doesn't mean that the buyer's just going to agree to pay more. And here's why. The comparable houses that a for sale by owner is most likely looking at and using for pricing of their house has that realtor fee baked in. In other words, the buyer won't just concede to paying more for a house because they're not going to get any value for that return of that additional premium. Personally, I don't know why a seller would accept a lower offer just because you don't have an agent. If a seller does, then that is the buyer's win. And that would mean that you just did all of that, went through all of those hassles for nothing. And you did all of that for nothing while most likely having a professional negotiating against you and trying to get a leg up with you in the transaction wherever they can. Hold on to your price. You did this because it was your goal to make more and save the money. You didn't go through all of this just so that the buyer can get a house for less. At least I don't think that's why you're going through and doing this and going through all these hassles. I know we just talked about a lot, but if you have any questions about selling your house by owner, then I invite you to reach out to me. Happy to help in any way that I can. Also, if you decide that for sale by owner word isn't for you, then feel free to reach out as well. I network with hundreds of the top agents in the country and I'm more than happy to make an introduction to an experienced agent that will help you maximize your sales price at no cost to you, of course. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Happy selling. Until next time.